All right, hello, welcome to this video. In here, we're gonna be putting a new twist to kind of an old classic pattern. Um, this, the whole idea of oak leaves and acorns has been around for a long time. Um, it's kind of a, like I said, a classic look, especially if you start looking at some of the, some of the older uh, leather works. Um, older saddles and stuff really have a lot of the oak leaf and acorn and it's just really kind of an iconic <clears throat> look to leather tooling I think um, but this pattern I drew up is kind of just puts a little bit of a new twist on it kind of a modern look um, and I'm gonna tool through show you a few kind of tips and tricks and things that I do to take this pattern and come out with this outcome here so now this one here doesn't have any finish on it um, and that just kind of shows you some of that color and definition that we're getting out of there with um, without a finish on there so I'm gonna just keep cutting this in here one thing that I did which uh, is stuff we've done with other patterns as well but doing this kind of over under on the border thing and that really just adds a lot more dimension right off the bat i think and we have some of the some of the pattern extending over top of the border like this acorn here and some of it that tile tucks underneath there so we're gonna go right on through here um, I'm going to show you all the different tools that we're using uh, kind of some different bevels I know if you guys follow along for many of my videos you see see me use a whole lot of one type of bevel um, the XX steep checkered bevel which we will be using that in this pattern as well however um, it's probably not the most used used bevel in this pattern, so that'll be kind of a new one. <laughs> but good morning, good morning. I appreciate you guys jumping on, uh, checking this out. Been a few days since we've been live, so I wanted to come on here, especially uh, now that we've released this new um, new belt pattern. So I'm wanting to come out with some more individual patterns as well uh, i know most of the patterns that we have so far have been in pattern packs where this is one um that's an individual pattern itself um, so i got some ideas for some other single patterns coming up as well but this one is going to be one of those single patterns uh, and then it is a digital download as well, along with along with the other ones that we have available there. So, and again, like we've talked about this with some of the other patterns, but as you can see, when I'm doing those cuts, I'm not necessarily connecting those right out on the the tips they're getting getting darn close but not actually quite connecting um, and that just helps for the durability of your uh, of your pattern or of your products excuse me because we're not going to create little points that can lift up over time so, uh, i see a comment there don i wish i could carve well that uh i remember wishing i could carve too and it just takes time i i believe you can don you can do it um just takes a whole lot of time but hopefully if you decide to feel free to follow along i've got lots of videos here hopefully help you out with with some ideas to get you started and going and um not only here too, but also on my YouTube channel uh, is where a lot of these videos are starting to head to, um, to where they're a little easier to look up and find on specific 
specific videos. Um, I got some some courses. I got the drawing course out. We got um, another for start for beginning tooling. I'm so excited. Um, still looking for that to release sometime in June, but uh, that's going to be a be a super awesome course for just the fundamentals of tooling leather um, or for floral carving, and it's going to be going to be a really awesome course. But um, if you're not looking to invest in a course, like I said, follow along here and my YouTube page for plenty of uh, plenty of content uh, that'll help get you going as well. What brand of swivel knife do I use and size of blade? So this is a 3 8 barrel with a quarter inch blade. Um, this particular one is a leather wrangler's knife. Um, I also have the same size barrel and blade in uh, Barry King that I like as well, but I've been I've been using this one a lot. Uh, it's been great um, Do I have in-person classes? Yes, I do have in-person classes um, we uh, Not uh, not a regular scheduled basis, but we do have them occasionally um, Both here in the shop as well as outside other places um, Julie Bogger up in Ellensburg, Washington has hosted me up there for several classes as well. Uh, <clears throat> this bevel we're going to move to is, uh, just a Barry King checkered bevel and this is a wide bevel. This is not a XX steep or anything. So it's going to have be a little bit of a flatter bevel and I'm going to use this out here on the borders. Good morning, good morning. Appreciate you guys jumping on here. I'm gonna keep cranking through this pattern here. The, the oak leaf and acorn idea in general, I find is a, it's really kind of a love it or hate it type of pattern too. Um, I know some people that just think, oh, that is awesome. I love the oak leaves and acorns. You know, people have lots of memories, reminds them of different things. Uh, other people, like, eh, I'd rather go for just a good floral look. So, I know we uh, typically do, do a lot of floral work on here. So, it's nice to switch it up every now and then give you guys a little bit of that that classic look um, and how I go about achieving that or, or doing that look. Um, and then also wanted to just offer that pattern up as well. So there is a little bit of a variety. I mean, I've obviously, obviously a pretty big fan of the, of the floral tooling. We do a lot of that, but I, I do like this as well. So we want to want to offer that to you yeah like uh, like you guys are saying it's classic old school look that yeah love it this bigger wide bevel here as you can see you can really cover cover ground in a hurry with it um, so much so you got to be careful with doing an over under border you don't get to cooking along and forget to stop where you need to stop Just like that border is already tooled so that um, like I said that wide bevel works super good on those okay now um, I typically don't use this hardly ever within a pattern um, just because of its size but this pattern here kind of lends to it pretty well on these stems I will use it in here they're long enough they can handle it and I love the that bigger shadow that it's going to put out next to that stem. Uh, we're going to do a little more to there, but you can see where that starts playing in, um, in that finished pattern. You can see that deep shadow that we set in there just getting started.
coffee cup rattle in there on the bench. Get that moved. Okay. Now when I come out towards the tips of those though, I do kind of fade that line out. Now we do have a little bit of curve within these leaves here too, just to help help create a little bit of a flow to that pattern. So you can see they kind of curve back and forth. So there, there is still some of that flow, but the inside curves are not too tight um, to where we have to switch bevels. We can still get in there with, um, with that wider bevel. Uh, hello from Austria. Excellent. Hello, hello. Appreciate you joining. Ah, that's uh, fun to see. Fun to see how far we we reach out uh, from time to time there. It always just amazes me seeing seeing when you guys join from. You know, Austria, Australia, Europe, Mexico, Brazil, all that. Um, I love I'm being able to reach out to uh, so many people um, so far away. And it's kind of, it's a humbling thought to <laughs> think that You guys would take your time to essentially come hang out in the shop with me here um, via online so that's really cool all right the next one now this is a bevel you guys have seen me use lots this is the xx steep checkered bevel very king i love and we're gonna use this but it's gonna going to look like I'm not doing a very good job as I get going here because I'm just using it little bits. So anywhere there's a curve, like an inside curve right there, I'm stopping and not using that. I'm just kind of fading into it. We'll use it on our outside lines really well though. On the outside of our acorns. Again, anytime we get down in those little curves, I'm going to stop that and kind of wait. We're going to come back with our other bevel for those. And there's in the in our traditional kind of, or not our traditional, but in the floral carving that we do, we do a lot of um, on here, there we talk about our flower centers, where we kind of come back and give give the flower centers a little, a little more special attention. Um, come back to those with with tools a couple different times um, to really get those to pop and stand out. And you're gonna notice when we go to doing these little curves on the inside there, that's kind of my equivalent of the flower center in. <laughs> in these oak leaves we're going to do a few things to really get that um get those curves to where they kind of pop and stand out a little bit and helps bring a lot more definition to um, to the whole oak leaf pattern i think
flip that around here. So just like any of my other uh, stuff, I go down with a tool all the way down, reaching everything I can reach, and then, then flip that pattern over, go back down it, reaching everything I can reach the other way, um, rather than flipping back and forth and back and forth. So just something I do to help, uh, help with the efficiency on, on my tooling, keep things going. Oh, good morning, Bandera, Texas. That's uh, that's a ways down away from us as well. Oh, great to see you pop on this morning. Even if you're watching uh, watching the replay here or watching um, catching it on YouTube. Let me know. Let me know where you guys are at. I want to. I want to see how far out we're we're reaching with these. So we're located up uh, in northeast Oregon, right? Uh, just on the outskirts of Pendleton, Oregon. <clears throat> so I want to see how. Who's the furthest away? How far out are we reaching? Some of you guys that are pretty loyal followers on here all the time that I am um, coming from right here in town to, you know, within an hour or two all the way uh, down to Texas, Oklahoma, uh, Alaska, Australia. We get a lot of you guys that are, that are on here all the time that we love seeing, but uh, when you get... A lot of, a lot of people down in Texas, which is great to see. Um, I think maybe I'll have to, I'll have to come down to Texas and try to do a class somewhere. I think that'd be fun. Maybe, maybe get to meet some of you guys in person. Okay, now, just with uh, kind of the, the feel, the look, the, um, the color on this. The, the sound of it as I'm tooling, I can feel it's getting just a touch dry. So I'm going to uh, just throw a little bit more water on there, re-wet that down just a touch. So yes, JD is voting for <laughs> voting for a trip down to Texas. Awesome. Um, gosh, where... Uh, Oh, this how this pattern is impossible to wear here in Austria. It's uh, reminding of a very dark part of our history. Wow, that's interesting. I uh, I'm gonna have to do a little research. I have no idea. Um, I'm not I'm not aware of what that is. So I'm I'm kind of curious. I will. Oops, kick the camera there. I will have to check that out. Um, yeah, so curious on that. But. Um, where at would be a good uh good location there for a lot of you guys in texas how uh how would like weatherford area be would that be uh um how how close of a location that be for a lot of you would that be something you guys could attend if we came down around weatherford okay <clears throat> now i'm going to switch to this uh this little round uh, checkered bevel here and I'm going to come in to where all these little curves are and I'm not gonna I'm not getting too aggressive with it but same thing right on the inside of those acorns there So we're just going to go get a nice bevel within those curves. Okay. I thank you, Wolf. I uh I don't know if I'm even going to try to pronounce that right now. <laughs> 
trying to help me with my research here for the um, for the relevance of what the oak leaf and acorn means there in Austria. So I'm gonna I am going to do some research on that uh, to check that out. Thank you for sharing that with me. Swap this around here. So the beveling always, uh, I mean, it helps any pattern, obviously. That really helps stand things out. But by using kind of the this little bit of a variety of bevels in here, um, it, which you don't, you wouldn't have to. I mean, you can use, if you don't have a little a round bevel like that, you can use just a smaller bevel that you can get into these, these tighter curves as well. But um, by using some of these different different bevels that really kind of help stand some different parts of this pattern apart and then brings a lot of a lot of life to it just within the just with the beveling itself okay now that uh, that does it on our beveling for that first run through there i'm going to uh, go to a tool here now just to compare the side by side on um where we're at how we're looking uh, you can see we're getting a lot closer but we still have uh still have a bit of shading to put in um and kind of really highlight those points. So I'm gonna come to my vertical line thumbprint. Uh, this is one that that I'll use with with kind of a bit of finesse through this pattern here, and it helps helps a lot. But I'm gonna start on these tips. Um, I'm using this as a leaf liner at the time. If you have a leaf liner, you can use that in place here as well. Um, but we're going to be really light at the tips, a little bit deeper down further in that stem. Now when I do that, you'll notice the angle. I'm pointing the, the vertical lines there out kind of at a, oh, I don't know maybe almost 45 but <clears throat> tipping off of that out towards the point <coughs> excuse me and then I'm also not holding it flat I'm tipping it back a little bit so we can soften that outside edge I don't want to I don't want to get that full tool impression laid laid down there Hello, good morning, Northern California. Thank you for joining. Northern California, they've caught a bit of press lately with uh, Jeff Davis opening up and doing the cottonwood rodeo hats off to jeff for pulling that off i love seeing that getting opened back up okay i'm gonna uh turn that around and just come down that stem again so uh, we're catching the other side of that
get my weight on there. And that's when I get questions a lot on too, is that weight. <laughs> um, that's just one that I, that I had made out of some scrap leather in the shop. Um, and got some regular BBs just like for a BB gun and filled those in there. They, they work good. That's, it's not super heavy. Um, if you want one a little bit heavier, kind of more ideal. If you get some lead shot, uh, it's a little bit, a little bit heavier in there, but, um, those little copper BBs seem to work all right as well. It's what I had access to at the time. So that's <laughs> what, that's what went in there. Sometimes you just make do with what you have, right? Okay. Now we're going to stick with the same tool, but I'm going to work towards the outside edge. Um, and this one here is going to be, again, a little bit more of a delicate process, but I'm going to be... Fading there, We're kind of just creating that little ridge right on the outside edge. And then, and again, that's tipping that back and fading back in towards the center there. You can see that little highlighted ridge out there kind of really adds a lot to that. Right there, I can use that instead of just leaving that hard, crisp line from that bevel being over there. By, by using that shader there, that thumbprint, and kind of soften that line a little bit and really get more of a smooth flow down underneath that border. bit heavier out towards that point there so you can hear that difference when I get down deeper at that point and then fade that out into there, but still creating that little ridge. Okay, I'm gonna swap, swap around there. I'm gonna do the same thing, just run back down the, the inside of this pattern. See again, just that little extra depth right out there towards those tips. Kinda helps bring a little bit of a a little bit of a curled look to them. Once we get down to this tool, we're down to just kind of some final little little details that, uh, that are going to make a big difference. So, he str JD says he struggles with this part. Yeah, it's a, boy, that, it sure is a finesse part right here. Just kind of taking your time and couple big things to watch is uh, 
is again tipping that to where you're you are fading that back out so you're not getting that crisp line but then the that little the highlighted ridge around the edge so the distance that the edge of the tool is to your line um, is what I find is a is a big key as well okay we're gonna set that aside for a minute now I had told you that we're gonna come back to those so we're not done in those little curves yet we will come back to that in just a second but I'm gonna switch gears for a minute and go um, to uh, I'm gonna go to this veiner here there's a there's a small veiner and we're gonna be back to that same tool that we just had here in just a minute but I do want to hit this one through here I'm gonna tip that to where we're pointing up towards that tip of those again, getting just a little bit of a angle to those. And I struggle with this I, out of my habits of, of my other floral carving. Um, floral carving, I'm gonna, in a lot of my leaves where I use my veiner, I'm gonna keep those a lot closer. But in here to, to kind of help towards that more traditional, realistic look. We're gonna spread those veiners out a bit more um, in these oak leaves. And then I'm gonna come around and match them up too. So if there's one out this way, that's where my one going out the other way is gonna be. And this is just, this is a small scalloped uh, lined veiner, um, which really even a, a little bit bigger veiner would work really well in these as, as well. Um, this is just the veiner that's in my block here that I use all the time for everything. Um, but you could use a little bit broader veiner and they would look just fine um, in these oak leaves. So... That's it for our veiner. Um, I'm gonna come back to the tool I had just a minute ago, um, and we're gonna switch over to our acorns for a minute. Um, again, we're gonna come back for our final touch on these leaves in just a second with a different tool, but the this is the vertical line thumbprint um, that I'm using. It's what we just used to, as a leaf liner and to put all the shading around the outside edge. I'm gonna come back on my acorns and I'm going to tip that um, first of all the angle that we're doing I'm going to bring that kind of out more towards that uh, maybe a little more than 45 out towards the tip and then I'm going to be tipping it out and rolling it a little bit uh, so we're just catching the edge right out there on the edge of those. Acorns. Now it's a real subtle thing, but that is gonna help bring some more definition and, and um, kind of a realistic look to them. But I'm gonna come right down in along there. I'm gonna get it a little bit flatter, but still picked up to where it's faded off and bring a little bit of a touch into it there. This is again one of those that's that's a real subtlety. You may not uh, <clears throat> may not even notice it at first when you look at the at the finish picture um so all the pattern the which when you if you get the download of this pattern you'll get an actual picture of the of the finished tooled piece as well in there just for a for a reference point for you but um and you may not even notice this when you look at it at first 
That's why doing these little tutorials, I think, are important. But look at the difference between this acorn and this one. You can see how much just that little bit of work with that tool around the edge, how much life that brings to that. Again, it's one of those things, if you don't do it, you wouldn't, you wouldn't realize what it is you're missing, I guess, until you actually do it and put it in there. Okay, got one more acorn right here. Now this one here, I'm gonna tip up and just get in here. Um, it's kind of like one of those little hollow, hollow shells where the your seeds falling out of there. But okay. Next, I'm gonna go back to my round checkered bevel. This pattern here, you'll notice, if, especially if you followed me for very long, I go back and forth to tools um, more in this pattern than I ever will in uh in any other pattern usually i go to a tool one time maybe twice if we're talking flower centers but um other than that i i kind of get a tool done but this pattern here i will go back just for kind of the order in which we do things um, to help stack them in there but now in these little curves i'm going to come back and kind of using this more as a as a lifter at this point so when I do that as a lifter, I'm going to tip it just a little bit to where I'm hitting not just down, but kind of scooching back in. Um, you can see it really highlight and pick up that little highlighted ridge that we set out with our with our thumbprint. We kind of just started that ridge, and now we can really pick it up. And get that to stand up so that's where taking this extra step of going back through with this tool is so beneficial in this pattern I think um, and again if you don't have the little round bevel um, you could do this with an actual lifter um, or um, with a little small bevel that you can kind of get in tight around those curves it would work too then in our acorns, I'm just, I'm tipping it back that way a little bit more to press that down. And to just touch those off as well. Just look at the difference between these two leaves where we've come back and highlight and pop those up compared to those two that haven't got it yet. I think it really makes really makes a difference. I mean just watch this this little line right here as we stand that up. Real lightly in there on those acorns. We don't want to. We don't want to make that too deep of a pocket in there, but we just want to stand that up a little bit. Oh, you're welcome, Tara. I hope uh, glad you're getting getting some value out of it. And it's helpful for you. Next, we're going to uh, come in 
with our decorative cuts. Um, we got, we're down to just our decorative cuts in our background. The, the decorative cuts, a little bit, um, kind of a little bit different in here maybe to what you might see a lot of, um, but we're gonna kind of help a little bit. Rather than just pulling them all the same way, getting a little bit of a curve in there is gonna, is gonna kind of help. You know, some of them will just pull in like that, but other ones will start out there. I'm gonna go through, we're just gonna go down, decorative cut these leaves, and then we'll come back and talk acorns here in just a second. Again, those cuts will fade them down as we come. All right, now the, <laughs> the Bob Ross leather videos. Yes, happy little acorns right here, Josh. <laughs> um, now, talking about the acorns, uh, we're going to do a couple different things out, out towards the towards the tips of them. I'm gonna pull a couple cuts, kind of like the cracks that they get um, naturally in an acorn. Now for the um, Oh, I don't know. I'm not good with the with the plant anatomy, but this little shell around uh, kind of the base of that acorn. Um, if somebody knows the actual term for that. You're welcome to correct me and throw that on there. Um, but we're gonna um, notice kind of how I'm doing this. It's not just a straight cross hatch, but I'm gonna curve these all one way across here. And now we're going to curve back the other way. And being mindful of our spacing between the lines. And that's what's going to give that uniform look like that. Okay. If I just did straight cuts across there, not so good. A cap. Thank you, Tara. There you go. The cap of the acorn. That's what we're looking for here. And I don't know if that's the technical answer or you're just guessing too, but it sounds way better than the nothing that I could come up with. So I'm going to believe you that that's the actual term for that. Yeah, that little bit of a curve we do in there is really going to help. Um, kind of gets that that dimension to those cuts um, you know if you if you got lazy here and just did straight cuts across there really take away from from that dimension um, and it would look like you had just a flat ring around there instead of an actual cap that that rolled around the end of that couple more here we're getting down to the end just about done with this
There we go. Now, all of our actual leaves and acorns are done. We're just down to the background. Um, and you can use whatever kind of background you would like to. Um, and just for the sake of this video, we're gonna switch it up. This one here that I have tooled up is with a bar grounder, uh, which you guys see me use all the time on all the floral videos. I'm gonna uh, do this pattern here. We'll just do this with a, with a little matte background that I have. Um, and just to maybe show the difference between those two, um, two backgrounders. The, the matte backgrounder is going to be one that's maybe more of a traditional look to it. Um, it's what you're going to see a lot, um, maybe some of the older tooling, where the bar grounder is going to be a way to bring a little bit more of that kind of a modern twist to it, maybe. Um, just kind of different than what I see in a lot of the um, a lot of the oak leaf stuff, but I have this uh, this matte backgrounder in here, and some people use matte backgrounders on everything, and that's great. It's I mean personal opinion and preference on on that stuff. Um, I rarely ever uh, use this. I always use my my bar grounder, um, which I'm maybe a little more proficient at, <laughs> at rolling through there with that. But um, you know, it's just the I like the look of the bar grounder. It's what I learned on. Um, it's not just just what I do, but. Um, it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with with these matte backgrounders as well. But seeing as how we have one example of the bar grounder sitting right here, what a great opportunity to run this uh, matte backgrounder so you can see a side by side on the exact same pattern. And again, if this is a pattern you're interested in, there's a link in the. Um, in the description here to the website where this is available um, and that it takes you to this actual pattern but you can also follow that link just to see all the other patterns um, on the site there as well if you're looking for some of the other things that we offer Now, real important in this is uh, is this little piece um, within this cap or shell here. Uh, don't don't get in a hurry and background that because that's not supposed to get background. <laughs> so leave that be. Um, I mean, you could probably background it, and it would just kind of take on a little different look. But um, but it's not intended to be backgrounded. I should say that. <laughs> And yes, yeah, as soon as I get done here, we'll show you a side by side of the two, um, two different pieces with the different backgrounding tools in there. Okay, that um, that tool back here. So there you have. This is the one we just got done tooling. This is with the matte backgrounder. Um, this is the other example that I have with the the bar grounder. You can see I got the bar grounder in there a little bit deeper. It's got, uh, which you can get your matte backgrounder deeper too. I was going a little bit easy on there. wasn't really hitting down super hard with it, um, but it will still take your die work and things like that as well. But there we go, side by side with those two different backgrounds. And hopefully you guys caught some... Uh, caught some tips and tricks in there with um, with maybe bringing a little bit of a different look to that oak leaf and acorn um, from some of the classic 
patterns that you see or have tooled. Um, I know one big difference uh, that you'll notice too is the kind of the points on, on these leaves will, you most commonly you see some more of the traditional stuff be real rounded out on the edges there. Um, so this just kind of touched it off to something a little bit different. But anyhow, thank you guys for joining me. Again, uh, if you're watching on the replay, let me know where you're at. Love to see uh, how far out we're reaching with these. Feel free to share if you um, find value in this and think somebody else could uh, benefit from it as well. Um, and follow the link if you're interested in this or any of the other patterns. Let me know any questions you have, and we'll try to get back to you um, in a timely manner. Thanks a lot. Take care.